Not only animals, but also plants are an inspiration for scientists. Welcome to the show, the Cacti Collection and its collector <laughs> and creator, Professor Christoph Neinhus, a bionics expert. Now, what can you actually learn from a cactus besides that it's prickly? Um, so, there are different things you can learn. Um, actually, what we did is we uh, investigated larger ones than this. Um, columna cacti, which have an uh, inner core, a wood cylinder like this. Mm -hmm. So you and strip the outside off right so here? So the, yeah. the outer water storage tissue is gone uh -huh. and the wood cylinder remains. And what interests us is, if you look at a, a, a regular tree, the, the side branches, they increase their diameter towards the stem to cope with the loads. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you look at a columna cacti, the side branches have the smallest diameter exactly at the branch, mm -hmm. and you would expect them to easily break off on loads. Actually, they don't, and that's what's the surprising thing for us. And despite the fact that it's very lightweight. Now, if, a, yeah. if an engineer actually constructed like that, you'd probably say, hey, pretty bad job, right? Uh, a student would probably uh, fail in its exam, yeah, <laughs> um, if, if he constructs a junction like that. So um, the question we asked was, why does the cacti, did the cacti do it like this, and what's the special construction of it and uh -huh. how can we learn something for engineering from uh -huh. it. And what did you find out? What's so special about the cactus? The special is uh, the, the cause of the wood fibers, how the uh, branch is connected to the stem. Mm. And this fiber arrangement, this is what we studied and that we tried to copy in a lightweight carbon fiber structure like this. Mm -hmm. So this has been braided on a big machine with a roboter arm mm -hmm. and um, in one complicated process to make a branched, lightweight carbon fiber composite material. It, it actually looks pretty simple. How long did it take you to arrange Oh, this that? is actually a process that, uh, um, of several years of interacting between biology and engineering uh -huh. to, um, to transfer the process and the principle of the branching of the cactus into a carbon fiber composite Amazing. material. Now nature is only working through trial and error. How yeah. come nature and evolution is still more creative than engineers? Uh, I wouldn't put it like this, but nature often has, because of limitations of the, of the individual species, um, the need to look for unusual should solution for mm. problems, especially mm. under extreme conditions like a cactus. Mm -hmm. And this is what we are looking for and how we think that for the future we might, might find quite interesting adaptations mm -hmm. which are also relevant for engineering. Yeah, about 20 years ago, maybe researchers were quite euphoric about bionics, but yeah. then besides the water repellent surfaces, nothing really came out, right? Oh, no, I wouldn't put, the, put it like that. One of the most spectacular and probably most successful stores is Velcro. It has, it's a bionic um, uh, development and it's used everywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, also optimization processes used to shape and uh, structures like that are quite common. Every car has a um, okay. bionically optimized um, structure in it. Nobody speaks about it. And what's the next step to come? What's the most important field in bionics? Uh, I think the most important thing will be molecular bionics. How can we mimic the process of building together small molecules to increasingly complex structures, how nature does it, and I think that's the future. Thanks a lot for the talk, Christoph yeah. Neinhaus. Thanks.